everybody. This is Patty Sliney, Handy Quilter National Educator, and I wanted to do a quick little video on <clears throat> how to turn a block design into a continuous line design that can be used for edge to edge quilting. Uh, notice that there was a post in one of our social media groups, I believe it was on the Pro Stitcher Light group, where we had a group member attempting to use a block design and use it as though it were a continuous line design. And that's just not something uh, that will work. A continuous line design is specially digitized and it's got a couple of very important features in it that allow it to be repeated horizontally. And those special features are a start point on the left, a stop point on the right, and the second feature is both of those points will lie on the same horizontal plane. That will allow the design element to be repeated horizontally and the start and stop points snapping together. So once you baseline your entire all over edge to edge design, those rows will all snap together and form one continuous design that's repeated horizontally and vertically. So this was the design that someone was using. It's the block of hearts design and I'll show you where it is. Um, it is in the PS, the one PS designs block subfolder. And it's right here, block of hearts. That was the design somebody was trying to use as a continuous line design. And you can see it doesn't meet the criteria. The start and stop points are on top of each other in the center of the design. But with a little manipulating right in Pro Stitcher, either light or premium, we can turn this into a continuous line design. And we can do that by using a tool on the Pro Stitcher tab called Record. And in premium, we have this additional function. It's called snap to grid. So I'm using premium. I'm going to turn it on. But for light users, um, you won't have this. This makes it a little bit handier and it makes your digitizing a little more accurate. But if you're very careful with your mouse on your laptop and you place your points exactly where they need to be, you'll be just fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to use record and mark and we're going to draw two line segments. I'm going to draw one from here, which is going to line up with the edge of the design. We're going to start it right here and per first point here and the second point here, we're going to baseline it. <clears throat> then we're going to create another line segment, put the first point right in the middle and its end point right here, lining up with the outside point of the block design baseline it and then we're going to combine the first line segment, the block design and the second line segment in that order, baseline them and we'll have a continuous line design. So let me turn simulate on and I'm going to move my crosshairs so they are right where I want them and I'm pretending as though I have light. So I'm trying to be really accurate and if you want to make sure you're accurate, don't be afraid to zoom in. Okay, I'm pretty accurate, so let me turn Simulate back on. Let's get that right on the grid there. And so there we go. Zoom back out. And you can see in my View tab, I have a couple of important things turned on. Obviously, one is the grid that you're looking at. I also turn my rulers on. That kind of gives me kind of a lineup. When I loaded my design, it loads right to the zero, zero, um, Y and X axis. So this makes it really easy for me to make sure I'm lined up. Okay, so I have my crosshairs where I want them. We're gonna go back to Pro Stitcher, record, and I'm gonna drop my first point by touching or clicking on mark. There, so you saw the first point. I have my simulate on, so I'm gonna grab my crosshairs. I'm gonna move it right to the middle again and if you're using premium, you don't have to get right on the crossing of your grid lines because I've got snap to grid on and so it will actually move it over and I'll kind of show you. If I'm a little off like that and I press mark, 
it's going to put that point right snap to the grid. Again, for light users, you need to be very accurate. Don't be afraid to zoom in like I showed you the first point, and I'll do that again. So we've created our first line segment. We're good with that. Let's baseline it. So now I need to create my second line segment, and I'm going to go right here. And again, pretend like I'm in light. Let's zoom in. Okay, almost, but not quite on there. So let me touch my simulate again. I'm going to grab my crosshairs. So I'm going to put right there. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to put my first mark point for my second line segment right there. Zoom back out. And I've got simulate on, so I could grab my crosshairs. And I'm going to try to line it up. Not sure if I'm really accurate. Let's zoom in. Almost. Touch simulate again, grab my crosshairs. Let's put it right on that intersection of these grids. Happy with that. We're going to press mark again. Zoom out. I've got a second line segment. Looks good. Let's baseline it. Okay. Now let's go over here to our right sidebar, which is very underutilized. If you click on workspace, it's going to show you everything that's on your workspace. So you can see I have my block of hearts design my first line segment and my second line segment. So I have everything that I need, but they're in the wrong order. I want this to stitch out so this line segment stitches first, then the block, then my second line segment. So here's how we do that. We're going to use our select tools down here. I'm going to click on select none so you can see everything is deselected. Everything is grayed out. Now, if I turn on multi-select, and just note, this is an on-off tool, so once you're done with it, you want to click on it again to turn it off. So I'm going to turn it on, and now I'm going to go back to my right sidebar, and I'm going to select these in order, and it's going to create a temporary group down here in order of how I've selected them. So this is, I know this is my first line segment, because these will de be displayed in the order you opened them or created them on your design space. I open my block of hearts design first, then I created my left line segment, then I created my right line segment. So I know what order these are. I want my left line segment first, then I want the block to stitch out second, so here's my temporary group forming, and then I want the second line segment. And now I can double check just by clicking on these to confirm I have them in the right order. So if I click on this one, let me move my crosshair so you can see. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm recovering from a little cold. Um, my first line segment here is orange. That's the one I want stitching out first. Then I want my block to stitch out and then this. So they're in the correct order. I am happy with this order. If I wasn't happy, I could use my up and down arrows highlight what I want to move, and then either move it up or down by using these up-down arrows. But we're in the right order. So I'm going to go ahead and baseline. Well, first I'm going to turn off my tool because <laughs> I don't want that on. Then I'm going to baseline, and voila, I have a brand new design that is an edge-to-edge -edge design. So let me show you what that's going to look like. Let's turn our grid off just so it's less background noise. And if I go to the repeat tab and I start repeating these, see how they're snapping together? And look how cool we get like a secondary design element. So I've got a row that are all connected. And then if I repeat them, how cool is this? Wouldn't that make a pretty baby quilt? So that's how you can take a block design, one that's really amenable to being turned into an edge-to-edge -edge design, and by using record and mark and adding a couple of line segments and making sure they're lined up nice and evenly and nice and straight, we can create a brand new design. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, and happy quilting!